guys, welcome to the Watch Star Watch Reviews with your host DK and today we're taking a look at another AliExpress brand that I actually haven't had on the channel yet. It is of course Escapement Time. So they came out I think maybe late 2019, early 2020. They released a couple of watches that were interesting, I just didn't have time to actually get one. And then of course I was contacted by a good buddy of mine, Jason the Watch Guy, who said he had one. It's a Flieger type watch and he said would I be interested in borrowing it for review. I said of course. Big thanks to Jason as well for lending it out to me. It's a very nice watch and I have a lot to say about it. I think it's a very good watch. Couple of small things I'm not a huge fan of, but overall well worth the look and well worth the purchase I think. So let's get into the review. So enough talking, on with the unboxing. So these are on sale at the moment for about 138 euros. You can get them in the Type A or the Type B dial. These straps were provided by Jason, who got them free from Vario. I did also get some Vario straps free as well. Unfortunately, they just didn't suit this watch. So thanks, Jason, for sending yours two in for me so I can actually throw them on. Inside the package, inside this little cardboard box, you just get the watch. I don't think there's a warranty card or anything, but I can't be too sure just because this one is coming to me from Jason rather than new. Diameter on this one, well, we're looking at about 42.5 millimeters there from 8 to 2. If you include the crown, it's 46 millimeters. Lug tip to lug tip, you're looking at about 50 millimeters, slightly under, but not enough really to make much of a difference. Lug width is 20 millimeters, so you should have no problem at all swapping out straps if you don't care for the one that it comes with. The strap it comes with tapers down to about 17.5 millimeters to where my fingers are there. Thickness on this one, 12.3 millimeters, and the weight on that strap is 94 grams. Most of that, of course, in the head of the watch. So specifications on this one, and it is all actually 316L stainless steel, as specified in the AliExpress description. You don't get a signed crown. However, it is brushed, and it is brushed stainless steel all throughout the watch on the case, crown, and that solid pilot-style bezel. You can see there the brushing is latitudinal, so it goes from sort of left to right or right to left. It doesn't go up and down and it doesn't go in swirls. You can see there as well that is a solid pilot style bezel. It does not turn and it is again brushed stainless steel. Anti-reflective coating, none on this flat sapphire piece of crystal as far as I can make out. Hasn't been too bad for glare though uh, and there is no distortion as this is a printed dial and it is flat. You can see there as well the fact that this is a sort of plasticky leather strap in brown with sort of a cream stitching and an orange underside. Unsigned screw down crown, however a signed screw down case back with this plane on the back. You can see there as well waterproof to 300 meters so this one is actually safe to go diving with if the stats are correct. Made in China, proudly declared there. Escapement time, the name of the brand on the back and Flieger Automatic which seems to be the name of the model on the back as well there. Stainless steel as it describes there on the case back and sapphire crystal as we went through earlier. It, the movement inside in this one as well is a very interesting movement. It's a PT5000 which is a Chinese uh, hacking hand winding high beat movement. So it beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour or you get six ticks at a second hand per second. I think it's six ticks, maybe it's seven actually, I need to check that. However, it does have a go state position. So you pull it out once, you can hand wind it, pull it out a second time. There is a date wheel underneath that is clicking, but obviously no date wheel visible. And then pull it out a third time and allows you to set the time and stop the second hand for the hacking function. So macro time, and you can see there that piano black dial with the white printed indices, the white printed numbers and the white printed minute track around the outside. Triangle with the two dots there at the 12 o'clock position. You can also see those really nice blue hands as well. Nice contrast and just gives it a little bit of fancy detailing. The brushing you can see there on the solid pilot bezel, which is very nice. Again, everything is printed on this one. You've got those sword style uh, hour and minute hands and a single stick uh, second hand there as well, which is also blued as you can see there. I think it's just painted rather than color treated, so you can heat treat these to make them blue, but I think these are just painted. Very, very nice though. Good touch of difference to it as well, and it just stands out against the black and the white. The fact that it is black and white as well makes this one incredibly legible and easy to see. And here it is out on my 7 inch wrist. So you can see there that strap as well in the natural light and the watch itself. It does fit quite well in fairness. I can't say much about that. Looks great as well. I think that black and white really is striking and goes very, very well with an older style uh, leather strap. 
However, if you fancy something different, how about a Bond style NATO? Again, this is a Zulu diver one that I had hanging around the house. Pretty decent quality in fairness if you want one. I'll drop links to any straps I use, of course, as an affiliate link down below. Looks well. Uh, it's a pretty thick watch as it is with 12.3 millimeters. So if you're adding a NATO, it's going to add more thickness again. Maybe that's not for you. How about the Vario strap Jason is kind enough to provide with it? I think this is a great look. That really nice tan leather. Very, very complimentary of that black and white dial. The fact that it is so plain as well on the dial means it will take a large number of different straps. If it was up to me, I would pretty much stick with a brown or a black leather strap. Just to prove that point, of course, I'm now going to show it to you on a black leather strap. This is an AliExpress cheapy one. Very different quality from the Vario, of course. The Vario, much higher quality, but a different price point. This one does the job perfectly nicely. I bought a couple of these just so I'd have them for review. But I think, in fairness, it goes really, really well with that black and white dial. The plain black just goes really well with more plain black. But if that's not your thing, here's one from Strapsco, a Dasari vintage kind of style leather strap. Really, really nice, bit of distress looking and that cream stitch down the very bottom there. This is what I've actually worn it on most, if I'm honest. Really, really enjoyed my time with this watch and particularly on this strap. It's got quick release spring bars as well, so you can swap it out for anything you want. But if you want to go really outside the box, this is a Milanese mesh that I got from Watch Gecko as well. This one actually is really nice. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. It doesn't really go with it. I don't think it's the most era appropriate, but honestly, I don't care. I think it looks really good. And if you want something very different, this is a good way to go. And check out that loom. In fairness, this one has performed brilliantly for my loom. Uh, you can see there the hands are very much stronger than the numbers or the minute track around the outside, which is the way things should be. Now, the only thing is because this doesn't have a loom pip and the numbers do fade off, I'm not sure if you could actually count this as a dive watch because of the fact that, you know, you're not really going to see where your dive time cal calculator is on this one. The loom pip doesn't show up because it's a solid pilot's bezel. But I think it's a great pilot's watch. You can see there the hands are hanging in much longer than anything else, which is the way you want it in any watch. You want the hands to be the very last thing to go. However, I will say the second hand does go reasonably quickly. So again, it's a pilot's watch, not a dive watch. So what are my likes and dislikes? Well, I'm going to start with one dislike first. So when you unwind the crown, of course, you have the second hand there. You pull it out again and you have your go state position. I never like ghost state positions on watches of any price point. They always bother me. It just seems like an inefficient way to do things. It's a waste of a date position and it just seems like something that would, you know, that could be resolved quite easily by just putting in a movement with no date and having a no date, you know, variation of the watch rather than shoehorning in a date position into a watch that doesn't actually have one. My next dislike on this one is the fact that this PT5000 movement seems to be based on the Miyota 9000 movement, which again has that wobbly rotor. So it's a unidirectional rotor, so it only winds in one particular direction. So when you shake it, you can actually hear it spinning. Now, I don't know if this could have been solved by making a thicker case back, but then again, that would add millimeters to the watch, or whether it's something that you're always going to have to deal with with this variation of movement or the Miyota series, but it's just something to be aware of. My last negative point on this one is this strap. I think it's awful. I think these plasticky leather straps that seem to come with a couple of different types of Flieger, my Heimdaller had the same one, is just really, really cheap and nasty. You can see and you can feel it's very plasticky. It's pliable enough, it's okay, but it just isn't what you want on your watch long term. Yes, you can easily swap them out, but at 138 euros, I'd be kind of thinking, yeah. I'd like a bit of a better strap. Now it does have a polished buckle. However, I noticed something, and this is something I've never complained about before, but that pin is tiny. It looks like it's off a different buckle. It doesn't even look like it's supposed to be in this one because look at all that movement. Like I know this is a really small thing, but then again, so is that bloody pin. And it, to me, it just looks flimsy. It looks brittle. It looks like you could easily bend it or snap it, unfortunately. And that just does not go with the rest of the watch. The rest of the watch, in fairness, feels great. The fact that you can really read it at any point in time is fantastic. You have that excellent loom as well, which means that, you know, in daylight, you have clean looks that you can see at any point, And at night time, you'll be able to read it all night, pretty much. Just give it a quick charge with your loom torch, as I did. You can see from any angle as well, there's no distortion from that sapphire crystal. You can see there's a little bit of glare off that one there, just from the studio lights, but it's not too bad. Also, I like the fact that these second hands and the hands themselves are blued, or at least painted blue. 
very very cool and the fact that everything there you can see the blue really pops against that black and white and i really like that sort of sword style hands as well quite thin sword hand for the minute and quite a little bit fatter for the hour hand as well very very cool indeed Another thing I really like on this one as well is the fact that it has a nice signed case back. Not everything needs an exhibition case back, especially if it's an ugly movement. I actually don't know if the PT5000 is a particularly ugly movement, but I have so many NH35s and uh, what's that GMT one, the Pearl DG movement as well. I'm just sick of them now at this stage. Unless you have a really nice decorated movement, just stick a really nice signed case back on the back and be done with it. The other thing I like as well is the fact that it is 20 millimeters lug width, which means that if you don't like that strap, like I don't, then you can swap it out very easily for a collection of other straps. 20 millimeters is the most common lug width that I've come across as well, which means that you're never really short, if you're anything like me, of a few straps that you can throw onto this one at a moment's notice and freshen it up. So guys, there you have it, my review of the Escape and Time Flieger Type A with the PT5000 movement. A really good watch. I'm not so sure, it's a high beat movement, but I'm not such a fan of the rotor noise that comes off it and the strap it comes with is awful. Uh, if anyone could let me know actually if bad straps, if those particular type of kind of plasticky leather straps are era appropriate for Flieger watches maybe, that would be great. Drop down in the comments if you do happen to know. I've had two, uh, I had my Heimdaller and I had this one in for review. Both of them had the same rubbishy plasticky leather strap. Maybe it's era appropriate, maybe it's a cheaping out thing, I don't know. If you do know, let me know. Guys, thank you very much. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure to like it. Comment down below if you do know the answer, if you want to comment anything else. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I have been your host, DK. This has been the Watch Watch Views, and I will see you guys next time.